As producers watch their weed emerge out in their fields, there's also a common weed that they have to worry about uh, in many parts of the state. That weed is ryegrass. Here to help us uh, understand a little bit more about the plant and how to control is Joe Armstrong, a weed specialist here at OSU. Good morning. Joe, good morning. Uh, let's start, I guess, with just a little ID of ryegrass so we can tell it apart. Sure. Uh, there's several grasses that, that farmers are fighting in, in wheat. Um, and identification is, is certainly the, the first step to that, so you can pick the right herbicide and um, start controlling that weed. Ryegrass uh, is usually pretty easy to tell because it's got a very shiny leaf surface to it, uh -huh. almost kind of a waxy um, surface, which that'll help separate from a lot of the other grasses. It's uh, hairless, generally. And then the one identifying characteristic are these clasping oracles here. Okay. So there's almost two little fingers that wrap around the stem, okay. connecting that leaf blade to the stem there. So um, ryegrass is probably one of the easiest grasses to identify, but it's something you have to kind of get down in there and, and check just to be sure what you have. Take a look at it, and it, uh, as you can tell us, is tough to get rid of. Certainly, yep. So what are, around the state, what are we seeing in ryegrass? Are we seeing any changes right now? Yeah, what, what growers are fighting now is um, what we had thought maybe was herbicide resistant ryegrass. And uh, last year, as well as this, this fall here, we've done some screening here in the field uh, with different herbicides and looking at multiple ryegrass populations from around the state to determine resistance to uh, different types of, of herbicides as well as different modes of actions. Yeah, and, and what have you found? Well, last year what we found was about 70% of the samples that we looked at were resistant to the ALS inhibitor herbicides. So things like Powerflex, um, Osprey, Finesse, pretty commonly used herbicides by most farmers, um, but are not killing ryegrass now. Now, I, I should mention that that 70% is kind of a biased number. Uh, what we looked at was ryegrass that was not controlled at the end of the season. That you thought, you suspected might be a yeah. problem. Now, whether or not that was uh, treated with a herbicide during the year or not, we didn't know sometimes the history in that field, um, but, but we thought perhaps there was a resistance issue there. Okay, so uh, this year uh, you've gone through, and, and this I guess is your control, uh, and, and so how does your study work? Yeah, what, we, what we've done is taken 200 ryegrass samples from around the state, um, basically all, all four corners of Oklahoma, planted them uh, the lengthwise here of the field, and then sprayed all of our herbicides across. So we've got 10 different herbicide treatments, as well as um, an untreated check where we can compare our uh, control with. Right, and you're looking to find out what worked the best. Exactly. Okay, uh, as we go this way, uh, I guess walk us through some of the ones that you've, you've uh, sprayed and what you're seeing in each, in each group. Sure, well th this is our, our untreated check here, and you can see pretty healthy stand of ryegrass. Um, so that, that's what we compare everything to. This first plot here is uh, looking at beyond herbicide. Um, some farmers might not be familiar with that. It, it's an ALS inhibitor. Um, it, it's what's used in clear field wheat. Okay. So in center field or oak field varieties, growers could spray beyond um, for grass control and also broadleaf control. Yeah. You see a couple plants living here. Um, some, some have been pretty well dinged up, right. um, but we've got some healthy ones there. Yeah. So it's kind of difficult to tell maybe the, the level of resistance that we have here. Um, but it looks like it got a lot of the broad leaves though. Yeah, it, this is a pretty broad spectrum herbicide, so it will control a lot of weeds. Moving on, this doesn't look like it controlled hardly any broad leaves, but is it supposed to? <laughs> no, no, that, that's uh, exactly right. Um, these two plots here are uh, Select and Assure 2, and these are uh, grass killer type products, ACCase inhibitors, we call those, um, and they're used in, in winter canola, uh, not in winter wheat. Okay. And growers may be familiar with these because it's a grass killer product that you can spray on a broadleaf crop. So they might use them in alfalfa or soybeans. Right. Um, but certainly, no broadleaf activity, so you'd want to throw something else in with your winter canola herbicide program um, besides this. But you can tell we're getting excellent control of the ryegrass here. Right. There's a few dead leaves around, but for the most part, it's pretty non-existent. It's taking them down, yeah. And, and again, this is a post-emerge type product. Okay. Um, but certainly a good option for ryegrass control if you can rotate to winter canola. Okay, and uh, what do we have here next, I guess? This one is uh, glyphosate, or we, we looked at a Roundup brand product. Um, this one's kind of tricky. You can see plenty of, of dead plants here, uh -huh. but you see a lot of green ones too. Right. Uh, that's the problem with Roundup sometimes, is that it doesn't have any soil activity. Uh -huh. So once you spray it, uh, that's the control you're going to get. Right. It's, it's strictly a post-emerge product. So this new growth here 
is all things that have germinated um, with this rain and warm weather we've had the last couple of weeks. So, okay. Um, again, in winter canola, where you could spray, in Roundup Ready winter canola, right. rather, uh, where you could spray Roundup, um, you, you need to make probably two applications to get okay. satisfactory control. So one in the fall, probably one in the spring. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, but it did control broad leaves pretty well, as okay. it's supposed to. Again, that's a broad spectrum herbicide. Right. So, uh, in this area, this uh, group looks like there's quite a few uh, clumps of ryegrass yeah. still living. This plot and the next one here are post-emerge again ALS inhibitors, Osprey and Powerflex. And growers may be familiar both of these for ryegrass control. Um, but again, those ALS inhibitors, that's the mode of action where we're finding the most resistance. And at least in these samples here, uh, we see some resistant populations here. So, um, Okay, so these may not be your best option or best choice? Or? Well, you know, they are broad spectrum for the most part. They'll pick right. up some broad leaves. Yeah, um, and they did a good job of that. Yeah, and, and they, um, they will give you that kind of activity. But if ryegrass is your main weed, you're going to want to look at something else. Okay. Um, a different mode of action, most likely. Okay, and what do we have here? Well, this is, this is the other mode of action that growers would, would want to use. Uh, these two plots are, again, ACCase inhibitors, okay. um, Axial, XL, and Holon, and these are used sp specifically for uh, wheat. Okay. So it's kind of a unique chemical where you can spray a grass killer in a grass crop. Okay. Um, but what we get here is excellent control of ryegrass. You can see a lot of carcasses there, yeah. uh, totally fried leaves. Um, but again, no broadleaf activity. Right. And the, the other issue with these two products is that they don't control any of the other grass weeds. Okay. They're, they're primarily for um, ryegrass and wild oats, if you have that. If problem. you have wild oats. But if you okay. have cheat or, or any of the bromes, yeah. you're going to have to look at another grass Something product. Else. So yeah. these won't work for those, but they seem to do a really but good job. They on are excellent ryegrass. ryegrass products. I guess lastly, what's uh, this looks like it wiped everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This, this is um, Axiom. This is a pre-emerge product or an early post product. You spray okay. it after the wheat um, has, has emerged, but you want to spray it before the ryegrass has emerged, okay. at least for the most part. Um, and so that can be kind of a tricky timing when you're fighting uh, right. precipitation and, and weather, but it, it's a good broadleaf uh, uh, herbicide yeah. as well as ryegrass. It, it suppresses a lot of the ryegrass growth. And if you look up and down all of our populations here, you can see yeah. Very clean plots in terms of broadleaf and grass weeds. Right. So, um, I guess overall, what, what do you recommend producers? How do they make these decisions? Well, uh, again, identification is the first thing. So, early in the fall, uh, when you're planning your herbicide program, see what weeds you have out there so you can choose the right herbicide program for, your, for each individual field. They'll all be different. Right. Um, once you know if you have ryegrass, and if in the past you've had problems with ryegrass using a particular type of herbicide, most likely the ALS inhibitors, then it might be time to start looking at a, a different mode of action. Try something different. And so we would recommend something like Axial XL okay. or Holon, um, but Axial XL is a unique mode of action for wheat um, and it will give you most times excellent control. All right, well Joe, thanks for your uh, talk this morning, sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. <laughs>